so excited to be David here today Quinn with to the tell prom. you guys about my favorite new musical of the season. You know, it was back in uh, the summer of 2016. I was on assignment in Atlanta, Georgia for uh, People Magazine. And I had a night off, and I was like, I'm going to go see this new musical called The Prom that's playing at the Alliance Theater. I knew nothing about it except for the fact that it starred some of my absolute favorite performers from Broadway and that it was created by some of my favorite people too. And I walked out of there being like, wow, I think I just saw the best musical I've seen in years. Okay, so if you don't know anything about the prom, here's what's going on. We've got a story about four Broadway performers who leave the spotlight of the Great White Way to go to small town Indiana to help a uh, girl in high school who is not allowed to go to her prom with her girlfriend. It is a timely and funny story, but it is also incredibly heartfelt and poignant. Um, it left me in tears when I saw it multiple times, and I am so excited today to talk about it with the cast and the creative team. So, if you guys have questions out there, there's going to be a hashtag where you're going to be able to uh, tweet your questions. Please do that. Also, the cast recording is available now, and you can pick it up after this. It's so good. And now, let's talk to them. Everyone, the cast and creative team of The Rock! You know, things that we've read in the papers about, you know, gay couples not able to go to their proms. And then I thought, what if it started in Bar Centrale with a bunch of actors that had that wanted to do more with their life? And I was like, I'm in. And then, <laughs> and then you know, we talked with, with Bob and Matt and Chad, and we were just really, after doing Elf together, we were really looking forward to working together again. And then uh, it all sort of started from there. You know, we did everything in order with workshops and readings and... You know, it's, it's been a long journey, but the correct journey. Um, and we'll talk more about that later, won't we? Yeah, well, it's been about seven years, right? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah from, from when we started with the idea and started working on it. And then, you know, we did uh, a, a reading, as you usually do, a couple readings. And then we did a, a lab of it about, was it four years ago? Yeah, four years ago. And then we went to Atlanta two years ago. Uh, and then came to Broadway. This, this past fall. So, you know, there were lots of changes made along the way, you know, and, and because of the, the topic, you know, when we first came up with it, it was very relevant. Uh, then suddenly it kind of wasn't relevant as much anymore, and then it was, and then it wasn't, and now it sadly is, but we're glad that we have this show here during this time. So it's great. Yes. And now 
Now, so many of you have worked together before and know one another. Can we try and untangle some of this web here, right? So, we obviously have the drowsy chaperone. So we What else? What are the other well, characters? Beth, 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 Beth,
we didn't, they didn't know what it was, but it was just kind of there. We, I don't even know if we had names yet. I, I don't know, we barely had names. But Matthew was at the piano, and, uh, and uh, but yes, it's an honor and, and pl the privilege, and, and of course, thank you. I've already said thank you to guys so many times. It's just, it's ridiculous. Thank you, guys. Now, I know those characters changed a lot throughout workshops and whatnot. One of my favorite stories that I heard was that Angie, your character at one point, was not a Chicago girl, right? Is that what I That is correct. Yes. Yeah. She, um, she was an understudy for Alphaba. For Alphaba. Yes. Who, who never went on. She we all know it would not be me. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she had to put makeup on every night, and, so, and it never came off completely. So she was slightly, slightly green to the entire time. <laughs> I love that. It's brilliant. So that's who they based your characters on. Who did you guys base your characters on? Who did you, when you were creating, is there any actor that you kind of turned to or thought about? Can you imagine if I said yes? Yes, it's a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd no, rather not say. Like a, it's like a compilation of, you know, there's Dee Dee inside of me, trust me, yeah. to have the permission for her to come out <laughs> and embrace my evil twin and my evil, <laughs> evil diva. It's so much fun. It's so much fun for Beth to do. So I think I based it on me. <laughs> Now I love that this story, you know, the four of you really are, are a big part of it, but the story's heart really lies with your two characters. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about that experience and telling these stories, you know. It is, it is so important to hear and to see this sort of representation on Broadway, and you're obviously making, you know, major marks. What was it like when you first read about the uh, show and, and first heard about it? It was really cool because when I auditioned for the show, it actually, what was presented to me wasn't really anything. At that point, it was um, titled The Untitled Prom Project. Um, and we got like a brief character breakdown, and that was it. That was all I knew about the show, auditioning for it. And that's all I knew about the show until I got to the rehearsal room for the first 29 hour reading. And then reading through the script, it was like, oh my god, this is incredible and this is a story that hasn't been told before but one that needs to be told um, and it was really cool that they had given a voice to this teenage lesbian and let her speak her mind and it was really magical and as well what about you uh, yeah i <clears throat> joined the, the show back in atlanta and i was in the ensemble at that point and so i got to kind of watch all these masters work and see this story come together and evolve over the time and it, it, i think it was incredibly impactful for me then and now to see how relevant it was to the students who were watching it, even in Atlanta, which is like a conservative, a liberal hub in a conservative state. So seeing how it um, impacted those younger students and also the parents who came up and realized that they were like being changed by it, I found that this show is incredibly important and needs to be told. And to the then I luckily got to take over this part of Alyssa and get to tell this story of which is also just as valid of the girl who doesn't know how to be herself and come out because she is so terrified that she will lose everything, including her mother, including her friends, um, and what she has built herself to be. And finding that strength is an incredible gift that I get to do every night, and I'm really excited about it. And it's crazy because it's 2019 and we think to ourselves that those stories aren't still happening, but I guarantee they are, they are every single day, yeah. I'm sure. Can you tell me a little bit about what you've heard from people who've seen the show? I feel like we're in a really special position with the show. Like we both get messages online and people coming up to us at the stage door and letters delivered to the theater from kids and young adults who have come to see the show, who have heard about the show, who just say thank you. You've given us a voice to be ourselves and we haven't had that before. And they just tell their stories to us and a lot of them are heartbreaking. Um, but they finally feel seen and that's really, Cool. And the fact that it's also a happy story for yeah. the, the two right. lesbians, and like it validates that they can have a life and it yeah. will be okay. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of the best part. What I think that's so remarkable specifically about Emma is that she doesn't really have that struggle with who she is. She knows who she is. And that's, I have only seen it really in another musical called Hairspray, where you had one character who knew exactly who she was and everybody changed around her. And that was an experience I saw with Emma. Emma knows who yeah. she is and everybody changes because of her. I think it's really insanely powerful, very emotional. That's what uh, I think makes the show work so beautifully. Okay, 
Now I'm crying. Now she was in Casey. Um, okay. So Courtney, you were in uh, Atlanta as well. Yes. And um, and this is your Broadway debut. Yes. Oh, I thought I was. I thought that was long in my past, but uh, yeah, life life continues. You never know what's around the next step. So. What did it feel like to get that call? Um, incredible, incredible. Um, Casey asked me in the in the theater, and when I, when I tell the story, I always said Casey was sitting next to me, and he said, "I need to, t I need to talk to you." And I was like, "Oh my God, he's going to fire me!" <laughs> <laughs> and and I said, "Yes." And he said, "You know, would you come with us if we, we go to New York? Will you come with us?" And um, just my heart leapt to my throat, and of course, I said, "Yes." I just got to figure out a few of my. <clears throat> Family logistics. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that happens. Uh, but I left my husband. I left my kids. Yeah, great. Starting over. Perfect. <laughs> Whole new life. What a Mama. <laughs> yeah. Now you play a tough character though, because she's you know obviously the catalyst for a lot of the problems throughout the show. What what was? How do you make her real? How do you find the humanity in her? Well. It, um, I play, you know, Alyssa's mom, Mrs. Green, and um, so she's exactly on the complete opposite side of everybody else that comes into the show. And um, the way that I have found her humanity is I just play her as a mom who loves her daughter and lives in a small town and has grown up in the church and has grown up with just a, in a very small town feel. And we all know what that is. We all, most of us come from those small towns. So um, <clears throat> I think that's, um, very relevant to me, um, and I've sort of, and being from Atlanta, I see both sides of it. I have very liberal friends, and I have very conservative friends. So I we performed this show for both groups of my friends, and I of course quiz them about their um, their reactions and, and what they would do. I have a dear friend who lives across the street who went through this exact situation with her daughter, who it was in a very small private school. And I didn't know that they had gone through this until, um, until she saw the play and the daughter had already graduated from high school. But she said, oh, we went to, I said, I took her to the doctor. I knew this was going on and I took her to the doctor and I said, can you help us? And the doctor said, well, this is something, she'll probably grow out of it. <laughs> and um, so it was, it, that was interesting. So when, I, when we have that line, we're sort of in my last, Mrs. Green's last desperate sort of plea with her daughter says, you're young. I always think of her, you know, that gave me such great sort of fodder for as an actor that you're young, you know, you're, you're confused. My, net, my thought is, you'll grow out of this. <laughs> um, but when you, I think when you play any character that, that people say, oh, your character's such a bitch, or your character, you're the, you're the antagonist, you know, I don't think of her that way at all. I just think she's she's different from everybody, and she just you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. And um, and a, a little uh, one of their fans gave me a card um, when I was walking out of the theater one night, and she she said, "I want to thank you for this playing this character. You remind me of some of my mother." And she said, "But here's a little drawing," and it was a drawing of Mrs. Green. And she's smiling, and she says, "This is Mrs. Green." One year later. <laughs> that was super sweet. I think that you guys did a great job with her, especially <clears throat> writing in. Uh, I'm sorry. You drew it. Bob, I was going to say, in, in Alyssa Green, in that beautiful song, you give her this line where she talks about the pressure of kind of living up, being good for her, the sake of her mom's marriage. And I think that that line really grounded her in such a beautiful way and did it make Mrs. Green seem like some villain. Um, so I thought that was really smart. Thank you. I'll take credit for that even though it wasn't my line. It wasn't yours. <laughs> Whose idea was it? But you know, it's... These actors who, um, and like Casey had a very important note coming out of Atlanta, which is that uh, we, we couldn't have one musical enter another musical. Yeah. We, that, that our Broadway clowns have a certain musical theater tone to them, but the town itself has to be quite real. So it's because of uh, Courtney and, and Michael and, and these guys that you believe uh, what is going on in that town. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm so glad to hear what you said, Courtney, because it's true that Mrs. Green uh, only wants to help her daughter. She's not, and she can't be, if she were portrayed as, as an evil character, 
um, it, the show would not work. So yeah, I'm, I'm thank God for these guys. Matthew, I want to talk a little bit about finding the sound for this show because I don't know if you guys have heard the score. Have you been listening to it? it is, I love it so much. Every single song is better than the last. What was the experience like kind of crafting that sound? Well, it mostly came from us outlining the story and, and just picking our moments for songs and what they needed to accomplish and knowing that the Broadway folks had to sound like Broadway folks and then, uh, and then giving them a specific uh, sound within that Broadway vocabulary. Um, and then uh, with the kids, really simplifying things and making it uh, more rhythmically based than, than melodically based, but still having hooks, because I love to write a hook. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it was really, you know, they always, they, their theater songs first. That was the most important thing that they, you know, reveal plot and reveal character, and that's the most important thing. Um, and making them sound right is something that evolves over, over, you know, over the development process. But, you know, Chad and I like to figure out what the whole arc of the evening is, and then, and then we pick our tempos, because you don't want, you know, two ballads in a row, you don't want two mid-tempo songs in a row, so we really work very hard to kind of shape everything. And then we run it by, by Casey, and, uh, and if he says, I love it really fast, we know we're in, and if he's quiet for five seconds, I know, I'm like, oh, we gotta go back to the drawing board. Um, I like it. Because I like it. Then, but, yeah, you know, you have to start over. Um, but, but it's great. But it's great. And, and what's wonderful is that we have an amazing leader uh, and who just, you know, we just trust him so much. So every time, you know, he loved a song, we knew it was right. And every time he said a song isn't quite there yet, we always knew that we had to find another way in. And I will say also, in the development process, two songs, um, Dance With You and Unruly Heart, Yay, both of those things. Um, they both ended very quietly for almost the entire uh, development process. They both ended, I have a tendency to want to wind things down. And then when we were in Atlanta, um, Casey pulled me aside and said, I think I want Emma to soar, you know, at the end of Dance With You. And we took, you know, like 10 minutes and just kind of figured out what it was going to be. And, uh, and we heard Caitlin sing it and everybody kind of lost, lost their minds. And we knew, and what was amazing was that we put it in the show the next night because you had to have it orchestrated. So, uh, and when, when we heard it in context, it just gave the entire act just a shot of adrenaline and it just changed the entire trajectory of, of, of the storytelling. And then we did the same thing again in Unruly Heart. Um, and that was really, that was hard for me to figure out. We did it, we didn't get it in Atlanta, but we did it in the last lab. And, uh, and I'm forever grateful to you for making me go back and try to fix that ending because I, I think it really just gets so emotional with all those kids and that kind of wall of sound with them singing and it was your idea to go acapella in that chord and it's just, it's just really thrilling and it's what, I love this collaboration so much because it's great, so. Well, the score is absolutely gorgeous as I said and Michael, you have one of my absolute favorite songs in the show when you sing, um, Man, Man, you. <laughs> but you do it real well. Man, but we, I talk about this idea of going to see musicals a lot. You, you see a lot of the same stuff after a while. I've never seen a song like that in a musical, where it really is kind of 